along the bottom of my head. That is usually how Russian scientists are thought to be speaking English. And that's not gonna happen today, okay? The whole lecture will be in English, then the questions will be in Russian. And what I really want to talk about here is a really mysterious topic. I want to talk about love. So, if you remember, Forrest Gump usually called love, uh, usually called life to be a box of chocolate. But love in this box of chocolate is actually a kinder surprise. You may ask why. First of all, because it's very simple. I mean, you know there's a chocolate egg, right? It's, it's pretty simple, you know it. You also know there's a toy inside. And it's also don't seem really complicated. And on the other hand, a uh, kinder surprise is actually sweetie. And when we want to tell someone that we love them, we call them sweetheart. So today, my idea is to tell you a little bit about how scientists try to investigate love and what different areas of science have ever thought about love. First of all, there came psychologists. And what they said? They said, well, why can't we just measure love and get to know how strongly do we love each other? So they just updated this passionate life scale. Uh, it's only about 20 questions. You just have to say how strongly you agree or disagree with the statement. Like, I strongly agree that I think about my beloved one every day, or I strongly disagree with that. And in the end, when you, when you take this test, you just have the result. What's really interesting that Helen Fisher Group has found that it's highly correlated with the activation of a caudate nucleus. It's the name of the inner brain structure that is somehow must be, I don't know, the root of love, the part of the brain responsible for love. We actually don't know. But the main idea that it's highly correlated. The highest scores you have on the passionate love scale, the higher is the activation in the caudate nucleus. And for those of you who have come with your partner, or who is just right now thinking to take this test or to make their partner take this test. Just keep in mind that the highest scores are quite typical for the first year of relationship when you're in strong and deep romantic love. Because later it goes a little bit down, but it's absolutely okay. I mean, uh, the mean scores can be from even four, five to nine. It still means you love each other, okay? Just keep that in mind if you want to take it. Another thing was that when uh, this test didn't seem, didn't seem to be really cool. Uh, there came another group of psychologists, and what they said was, well, love is not about measuring love. Love is about the level of dopamine in the brain. So the more you're in love, the higher is the level of dopamine in your brain. It's easy peasy, isn't it? So the point is, if you want to impress a girl or to make a girl to fall in love with you, you just have to go on adventure to raise your level of dopamine. For example, horror movies would work. I mean, now you know why some boys prefer to, uh, to take girls to horror movies in the cinema. But also keep in mind that actually it may not work as well as you could think. Because there was a story when a good PhD guy decided to use this dopamine rule and to raise uh, the level of dopamine in the brain of the girl who wanted to fall in love with him. And he went to a horror movie with her. The result was when they came after the movie, she said, oh my god, the leading actor in that horror movie was so handsome, I would fall in love with him. So you see, the guy failed. And that's because we actually don't know how it works. I mean, we can call love the rise level of dopamine, but what it actually gives us, not so much. So then, there came neurobiologists. And they actually said, hey, can we just detect love and say what love is just by detecting it? Uh, they didn't try uh, to define what love is. They just put a group of guys who were truly deeply in light in love. I'm citing the article now. They were truly and deeply in love and put these guys into an fMRI scanner. And here are the results. On the upper part of the slide, you can see that some brain regions were highly activated and another brain regions were on the opposite deactivated. So here's love, guys. That's it. If you wanted to know what love is, that's it. If I wanted to impress you, I could tell you, for example, that insular hippocampus and anterior cingulate gyrus are activated. But it's just the name of the structures. And again, we still don't know what love is. Love is a pattern of brain activation and deactivation? I actually doubt it. And now, the question, the main question of this lecture. How many of you have Tinder installed on your phone? Raise your hand right now, come on. I know they are here. <laughs> Yay. And I also doubt that there's a couple of you who didn't raise your hand, but you have Tinder on your phone, don't you? 
I know you. Okay, so the main idea about Tinder is that recently uh, they presented an updated Tinder where you don't have to swipe right or swipe left. Uh, you just put on an Apple Watch or a fitness tracker with a special detector, detector of your heartbeat. The idea is the following. If you have a look at the photograph of someone who seems to be attractive to you, your heartbeat rises. And if your heartbeat rises, it can be detected, so it's automatic swipe to the right. On the opposite, if you have a look at the photo and you don't really like the guy on it, uh, your heartbeat decreases and it's swiped to the left. Now when you know it, I just want to tell you a little social psychology experiment that was done in 1970s by BAM. The idea was the following. He actually made somehow a parody of Tinder. He gave a group of his participants, a group of boys, a pack of photos of different girls. And he just asked the participants to sort these girls out in two groups, to put on the right the girls they loved and to put on the left the girls they didn't love and wouldn't like to date. And also, he put some false detectors and said the participants they would detect their heartbeat. So the participants have done the, have done the task. They sorted out the girls in two groups, the girls they loved, the girls they didn't love. And after that, uh, the experimenter lied to them. And he told like, hey guys, frankly speaking, uh, your heartbeat rise when you had a look at the photos of the girls you put in your didn't like group. And your heartbeat decreases when you had a look at the girls that you put in I like them group. So you see the point, he told them the opposite information. Then he gave them 10 minutes to think it over and gave the same pack of photos to sort out again. And do you know what? Actually, all the participants changed their preferences. So they really believed that they liked the girls they didn't like the first time, and now they put them into the group I love them and I would like to date them. So when Tinder really releases this update, you really should think over, do you need it? Because just imagine if something happens with your detector and it's getting your own information. And also there's a really common question about hacking of medical data. Who knows, maybe in the future there would be some kind of hacking love data. Okay, so just summing up, I want to have a look at what science can really tell us about love. It's not that much really. I mean, if you ask a scientist, a scientist, what should you do about love? Scientists would give you rather banal advice. For example, you should go to an adventure with a girlfriend or boyfriend. It would be fun. It would raise your level of dopamine, you know. On the other hand, some scientists would just tell you, well, just have a look at the photos of the beloved ones, because this would activate all these brain regions that we call love, you know. So the idea is that when it comes to love, the science is Jon Snow, because science knows nothing about love. We can have a lot of talks about what love is. We can try to find different definitions of it. But again, coming back to Kinder Surprise, here's a toy inside. We all know there's a toy. But if you just open it, I mean, it doesn't seem like a toy, right? It's just a, piece, a group of details. And what scientists really know, we know what are these details. But to make it love, to make a love out of it, uh, would take some effort at some time, and it only depends on you. And just summing up, if science is not so cool about love, possibly we should raise above it and focus on science itself. Thank you for your attention.